this is Mercy Mitchell with Vortex Yarns and I am doing a demo today and it's called how to add more junk to your art yarn and so some of you have been spinning before and some of you may be new at it so we're gonna start with talking about the things that you can add for your art yarn and possibly different ways to add them into your yarn to add more stuff, add more junk, add more excitement, more uniqueness. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to work on a bat and I'm going to talk about some of the things that you would add in the carding process. So I have roving, I have some colors picked out, and I have some silk that I've dyed, I'm going to use some of that, sparkle, and then I have a big bag of chopped threads. So I'm already chopping the threads here. And for the spinning, for the carding process, silk, uh, I like to add a little bit of silk on the beginning because it adds a nice soft uh, surface. And add a little bit of that in. And then in order to see your sparkle, I like to add that near the uh, first layer also. I'm going to add some wonderful, I'm adding some gunmetal. But sparkle comes in every color, purple, pink, blues, copper, silvers, reds, pinks. It's pretty fun stuff. The next thing I'm going to add to junk up my, my yarn some more, and I like to cart it in because these are more finely chopped um, odds and ends of yarns, all different kinds, all different colors, is that a lot of times in the carding it will open it up and spread them through and they'll become, some of them will become fluffy, some of them won't, but some of them are so short that this will capture it into the wool. So I'm adding, adding a handful and I'm just gonna suck it up. a little bit more. Cool thing it's all random. All right so those are good things to start with carding in. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my uh, wool. And this is my hand dyed merino wool. Uh, I like there's a couple techniques you can use. One you can add one color and you card it all the way across. Then you do your next color, and you do it all the way across. With the line. And then we have a little bit of cranberry. We're gonna go all the way across. Carding that way will create a unique blend because it's not perfect. It's not multi-blended. I'm not going to blend it again, although you could do that afterwards. So that will create one effect with your hand spun yarn. Another technique I like to do, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way, which will create a different effect, is you take your color and you only do it on, I'm doing four colors, so you just cart it onto one fourth. And then your next color, the next um, fourth section. Third fourth. And the fourth area. Now sometimes you can add other things in the carding process. You could, I have added things. That's a good time if you want to add feathers. Uh, it's a good time to add things like, uh, this is bamboo, like little dyed bamboo remnants, uh, chunks, also mohair. Uh, the thing with the mohair is that it will open it up, but you can add some nice color and some nice bumps and nubs will appear with that. And any other special threads or yarns you want to do. So we're going to top it off. We're going to top it off with another chunk of yarn, which would essentially be the 
the back side. And then I like to finish off again with a little bit of silk. It helps hold things in. It makes a nice, uh, when you're spinning, makes helps with the draw. And silk is awesome. Of course, you can pick more than four colors or less than four colors. Play with your colors. That's part of the whole thing, like getting inspired maybe by something you saw or maybe something outside that has inspired you. So I'm going to take this off the carding and just to let you guys know, this is a Louette Classic hand drum carder and I really prefer them um, as opposed to anything electric because you can control, especially for art yarn, you can control putting in a little bit of color, a little bit of this, you can take your time. You can control where you're putting or mixing your colors, uh, which is really fun for making art yarns. So here we go. This is the back, this is the front, which appears more blended. And then the back, you can see where we were doing the four. And each thing as you play with it will affect what your yarn ultimately looks like. So we have our bat ready, and we're going to use that when we add some other things. So when you think about getting more junk in your art yarn, there's a lot of fun things that you can do. One thing I like to do is I have little bowls. I love collecting little bowls, but I start adding in particular amounts of ribbon or yarn or other ribbon um, are either into projects or I'm cutting up small amounts of, say, um, end of a, you know, a strange, this is actually a, a commercial that you can unravel and get little pieces from. I put colors that inspire me together in, say, a, a one bowl. So here's another bowl. I'd like to show you an example. I'm just gathering this orange, and then I have purples that are bouncing with it, and some ribbon. And things start collecting so that when I'm ready to make an art yarn, I can card and then use this particular bowl as inspiration. And those are fun to make as you're collecting things. Another thing that's fun to add is uh, mohair locks. And these add a great, uh, they add texture, and we'll look at that when, we, when we're spinning. These are fun to add, and we will add some of those and this to play with. Now this is, this is like the end, the ends of a project. The actually this yarn has some knots in it. But this is a, a little bit thicker yarn that we can add also. You can add it tied or spun in, and that's fun. And so part of the prep is if you're working with leftovers, check to make sure you have, like this has a knot. I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to cut this in half. I hope that'll work. And I'm getting together a few colors that I will enjoy and I can go with what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that. Cut that. That's two. Excellent. It's got a little bit of yarn there, too. Another thing that's fun is netting. Netting is really fun to add in. You can make a little bow tie. You can snip it. You can rip it. Those are fun. We'll add a few of those as ties. That's a good source. And a lot of times you can just find scraps of this. And then silk ribbon. That's always a wonderful thing. Um, and what I'm going to do with the silk ribbon, I'm going to cut it long. I want to add some long pieces. And because it's so thick, it is beautiful, I am actually going to, sometimes you can tear it. We'll see. Tearing will add more. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'll save that one. <laughs> some, some will. So I'm just going to cut off uh, some thinner strips. You can also do this with old silk clothing. You can strip it and make some silk that's going to be twisted in or tied in to add more junk into this wonderful yarn we're going to be creating. I'm going to put those in a pile. Another thing, now this is something later. Uh, where you can really add a completely different element. And this is if 
when you ply the yarn. So when you ply the yarn, normally you would have you have your ply thread and then you would ply your yarn. Before you start plying though, if you want to add even more elements, take a needle and thread and I have a box of treasures which is flowers, um, pearls, an old bag where I'm getting off the little metal pieces. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can save and actually string onto your ply thread that you would simply ply on and move on your thread and adding these elements in the final version. So that's a way to prep and most things will just, you just pack it all on before you're ready and you'll just be sliding as you go. Uh, and you'll learn that some things are a pain and they will get caught sliding. Some things are easier to move, but it's worth doing that. So you may say, well, how do you have all this junk? Where do you get all this stuff? And my first recommendation, I have a few recommendations, but you can go to your local arts and crafts shop. That's a good place. And there you can find a lot of fun stuff to add. You can also go to your local thrift store, and a lot of thrift stores these days will actually have these bags of like miscellaneous junk, and and you just got to start opening your eyes because sometimes it might even be like charms. You could add charms on the ply thread. You might find flowers or just even tiny scraps of material or bags of old like yarn that you'd want to chop, and that would be great yarn to chop for your um, your add-in on your chopped yarn. There's a couple things you can do on the chop yarn. I want to show you. This is a completely miscellaneous bag. So this is all different colors. I've chopped all different things in here. However, it's also fun to do color coordinating chops. For instance, this would be an example where I collected the colors I like. They're all different yarns, but they're all in the blue family with a little gold. So there's a couple ways you could prep. So you could just use a certain amount of yarns. Maybe you just want to use metallic yarns or certain colorways. That's another fun way to influence all the stuff you're putting into your yarn and how it's going to look. And um, so yeah, so you, you've got the craft store, the thrift store, and another place is your house. Basically other projects. So let's say you're a knitter or crocheter or a weaver. You're always snipping ends or you're winding yarn, you know, and you have those little ends. All those things are worth saving. Look on your floor. You never know. There's a piece of a jean. There's a thrift. There's all kinds of things. And then the fourth place could be your everything junk drawer. You never know. It could be some cool stuff in there. And there could also, uh, who knows, maybe in the garage. You could find some springs or something unusual. So it's always worth looking around in your boxes and in your drawers with a different mindset to make your yarn unique and more junky. Okay, so now we're going to go to some technique, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of how you can add these things, these elements, into your yarn. Now I'm going to go to the spinning wheel. So this came off uh, the carter, and this is essentially a bat. A lot of times... You guys would see bats if you buy, you know, if you buy them made, you would get something that looks like that, which is cool. Uh, often that's how they are. So then you, just for people who are beginners, just so you know, you would undo your bat, and then usually it would spread out. And when you get it to this point, the easiest way to, to do is simply peel off. This is what I like to do. And the thing is, you're making art yarn, and so... It doesn't, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have chunks of things hanging. You're going to go for a general uh, thin strip so that you can work with it easily and you can adjust during your spinning or not even worry about it. You can have thick and thin yarn. So this is what I do to prep. And sometimes I will have a little table with a tray on it to add, have a pile of my junk. But today, I'm going to just going to take it all that we're using, and if you if you're like me, I like to spin with a, a nice apron on, and then you can put your stuff in there. And we're going to grab we're going to grab a, a chunk of the 
the special blue just to show what that might do also. And so I'm, I'm probably going to do a, I'm not going to do too thick of a yarn on this spin, but you can do it any way that you would like, of course. If it's too thin, then you may have trouble putting in all your junk. So we're going to get this started. And, oh, also, by the way, uh, I am using a jumbo flyer because it has the big holes. And this is good if you are going to be adding big chunks of things or ribbons. And sometimes you can spin on a smaller, thinner bobbin. Um, at the beginning and then if you're adding a lot of stuff like I showed you like the big metal pieces or metallic stuff you can switch to this for the ply the second part but for now we're casting on our yarn and we're going to get this thing started we're just going to simply spin and here some of that yarn that carded see how it it, it um, kind of got opened up and add some interesting elements which you can push in, you can pull, you can make a, a big blump with it. And so you're just simply letting it appear things are happening. You're letting it go. And I like to just start before I add more things. I like to get a good leader going. And that helps when you tie it later and helps when you're using it. If you're knitting it or crocheting it, you have that beginning for cast on that maybe isn't quite as junky as <laughs> the rest of your yarn is going to get. So some fun things are happening here. We've got, got these little bumps and blips and fuzz, some silk. And so now I'm going to add some, I'm going to start by showing you some techniques with mohair. So mohair is really fun because you can do it a couple of ways and then you can go back and really make it bumpier later in your ply. So I'm going to tuck in the tip of the tail here into the yarn. It's going to, and that's going to grasp it. And then the rest of it, I'm going to try to let it float on the outside as much as possible. And then just simply grab the tail again. And then I got a big chunk of mohair sticking out. So that's fun. I'm going to go down. Oh, here's a bit of ribbon. See, oh, that's a piece of cloth that was in there. So that's fun. Let it, see, I'm letting it wrap on the outside. So it's kind of fun to add stuff like this because you can work with things that appear as you're going through your yarn. The next thing I'm going to add is if you have some longer or some yarn that you really like or has a nice color palette and you want to add it through, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can tuck in an end. I'm just going to tuck in the tip of that and then you're going to run it down your yarn all the way down and it's going to cause, it's going to make it a little bumpy, it's going to add a little bit of thickness and you're going to tuck that tail in on the end, which is a good idea. It may flop around if you don't do that, which is fun too. Another thing you can do, let me join these two pieces here, is you can take these and you can think about them, you can space them, say you want to do two per uh, length of roving that you're doing, or three, or, or maybe be more random, too, at your whim. You can take a yarn that you like that's kind of special. You can pull it through here. You're going to make a split in your roving. Take it up. Simply make a little tie, and then continue spinning. And then suddenly you have a fringe happening. And you can fringe as much or as little as you want. And so this is secure and will stay. Simply slipping it through the roving, not very secure. Even with plying, you're more than likely it's going to pop out. So that's a fun thing to do. And really you can play with yarn in all kinds of ways. Oh, all right. Now, and it's just fun to have a lap of stuff. And you just kind of go with your whim. Now, material or silk, you can do a couple of things. If they were shorter, you might want to do the same technique. I don't know if I would do them this long, maybe. Maybe I'd do it half where it was cut there, and you would have another, I would do a tie, and you would have a nice silk fringe coming off. Another thing to do 
is, and you can do this with material also, and you can cut material in the round to have a very long run of material. It can make your yarn heavy though. Thank you. But this I'm just gonna show where I'm gonna wrap the silk, which is very light, and is not gonna add a huge weight. Like if you use cotton or some other material, be aware of that because sometimes you can end up you can make end up making super heavy yarn. If you use a long piece of material like this, one thing you can do, which is fun, is when you do tuck it through again on the other end of the roving, it's just gonna secure it, but you can leave you can leave that tail whoops, out. And then you'll have a little tail that's just gonna be a part of your yarn. Silk is fun. And then we're gonna give it a little bit more with just the yarn that was carded in here, adding different. Oh yeah, here it is. It just grabbed itself naturally. Here's that piece of uh, netting. So netting is fun and adds a great element. And I usually just like to put it with, just with the yarn, let it do its thing, leave a little out. And then you get this great, it's like a little haze. And uh, there are different nettings. Uh, be aware of that. Some nettings are just horrible and scratchy and some are nice and thin and soft. So if you made something out of this, you really want to go with the softer stuff, unless you're specifically spinning for something where it doesn't matter if the yarn is rougher, like maybe a bag, and you can really push the elements. And here's another piece. There it is. It just, of course, netting likes to stick to everything, so we're just going to let that go in there. The yarn is popping now. And so my other element I had was the special, I did a colorway. And there's a lot of things you can do with this. You can just add some in a big, in a section. So you're gonna get this blue. You're gonna, you know, changing, you know, adding a certain color in amidst uh, the other colors that you blended. So you can offset. So if let's say you have, you could do contrasting colors. If you had, um, like say red underneath, and then you can add different color, like blue on top, and it would highlight throughout your yarn. And another thing you can do is not even add as much. You can add, let's say, I'm going to add this bit, which the silver. I'm going to add a little strand of that. And then I want to add a little bit of the blue fluff, and that's going to have a different look down here. And you can kind of pick out pieces, but you're still adding something that has been related in a color combo, but yet you have different textures and different yarns. Now really, the sky is the limit. I encourage you to play with uh, putting things into your yarn. And don't forget that you can add completely different things. When this is done, um, if you're not making a single and you want to go back and ply your yarn, then you can add um, a tons more elements of uh, really cool findings, or uh, charms, or, or special additions that you want to have uh, simply going through your yarn. But that is the basic uh, playfulness of how to add more junk to your art yarn. Have fun, you guys!